So this week we're going to continue where we left off last week. We're going to build a small program. We're going to use the same hardware, the MB1, the 16 digital input, four digital output with relay, with four relay outputs. We're going to use a Profinet communication module. We're also going to use a virtual I.O. This will be used to communicate back to the HMI to display what's actually going on here in this local project. I'm going to rename A4, A5, A1, just so it's easier to, to know where you're assigning your inputs and outputs to. This will just help when you're assigning inputs and outputs to know exactly which module you're putting them into. So if we click on user program in the top left corner, you can see it opens up a new page. And this is the page where you'll actually program the controller. And down along the left hand side will always be your inputs, your logic will be here in the middle, and on the right hand side will be your outputs. So we've all our function elements here, our e-stops, like curtains, etc., our logic elements. Down the bottom we have our output elements. So I only have a relay output available. I don't have any semiconductors. That's because I, I don't have any semiconductors in the hardware I chose. If I chose a, a hardware that has four semiconductor outputs, then this would be available to me. So I'm just going to choose, I will say, a drag over. And I can see I can't drop the e-stop anywhere here, only on the left-hand side. And I have three switch types. I have a normally closed type one, two normally closed type three, and a two normally closed type three simultaneously. And I'll do an e-stop on each. So this one I'm just going to choose the one normally one channel normally closed. It's asking me to put the location where I want to put it. I want to put it in the module as 16 digital inputs. Where in the module I want to put it to I zero. And I'm going to use the detection of shorts. And I'm going to use test pulses. So I've got four test pulses on the base unit. And I'm going to assign test pulse zero. So test pulse. So the e-stop is going to be ran via test pulse zero through the e-stop and back into I zero. The next e-stop I'm going to use, I'm going to use type three, two normally closed. Same thing again, I'm going to put into 16 digital input module, I one and I two. I'm going to use section of shorts, I'm going to use pulse one and test pulse two. And the third one I'm going to use, I'm going to use type three simultaneity. So Simultaneity is monitoring the channels, and it's the, the time between each channel turning on. So it gives you a max of three seconds from channel one on the e-stop to channel two turning on. And if there's if the time is quite large, it, it detects it as a fault inside in the, the logic. I can adjust the simultaneity default value from 40 milliseconds all the way up to 3000, but I'm just going to leave it at the default for now. And I'm going to assign it to I3 and I4 of the 16 digital input car with detection of shorts. I can repeat using test pulses quite easily, test pulse 0 and 1. And I'm also just going to add in a light curtain. Uh, I have two types, type 3 normally closed and the type 3 normally closed simultaneity. I'm going to use simultaneity. There's no need to use detection of shorts as the light curtain has its own OSSDs. And I'm going to use imp I5 and I6 in this. So in my safety matrix, I want all the inputs to shut off the same output. So I'm just going to use a logic block. I'm going to use the, the AND gate. And since I've got four inputs, I have four inputs to change here on the, the AND gate. Let me change it to four. And now I can just drag and drop to each one. And I can just simply put that straight to a relay output. So this relay output would be a single channel I have four options. I'm going to just go with output zero zero, and that is the output that is feeding my contactor. We'll say K1. And simply join the two together, and you've now built a very simple inputs. Any one of the inputs is activated, then the output shuts off. These are all an automatic reset. So if I wanted to put in a manual reset into the circuit, I could just use a, a normally closed push button that I have on the on, a, on the control panel. I could change this to normally open. The 16 digital input i7 and i use detection of the shorts and the in the miscellaneous you'll you'll see a start element and if i use that to activate my my manual reset i can just delete this line and i've now just added in the the reset button so if any one of the inputs gets knocked down then the AND gate will be, will be low, but if they all get high, the AND gate will get high, but this block won't get high until it's given a pulse from the manual reset button. And if I wanted to put in feedback into the contactor, so if I wanted the normally closed part of the contactor down circuit from here to be monitored to make sure my contactor 
isn't sticking, I can put in a feedback loop into the output. So this feedback loop is on the normally closed parts of the contactor. And if I use a test pulse, I just run a test pulse through that. And I can just say it's in the 16 I8 and I use a test pulse. I call it test pulse tree. So I'm now constantly monitoring the normally closed part of the contactor. So I've now built a circuit with four inputs, manual restart and feedback. In next week's video, I'm going to look at more of the virtual inputs. So I'm going to be communicating back to maybe the HMI or using the Profinet to communicate back to the Siemens PLC. So if you have any questions about this or about the next few videos, just pop them in the comments below.